So let's talk about how you can um, expedite your custody case in uh, family court. My name is Brian L. Jackson. I am a Tulsa father's rights attorney here with dads.law where fathers are not disposable. And I wanna to talk to you about steps you can take to expedite your custody case. This is a complaint I hear a lot is that it takes too long to get through court. It's taking forever, um, that nothing's getting done, etc. And there are some factors that determine the length of your court case that frankly, you can't control and we attorneys can't control either. We don't control the court's calendar, for example, and we don't necessarily, we don't control what the other side does, although we can influence it. Um, and those are things sometimes that can lead to un unforeseen delays. However, some things that you can do that help move the case forward, because these are things that can sometimes also cause delays that are completely avoidable. First of all, understand that you will need to provide financials. That is your, your taxes, your, your um, check stubs, your bank, bank statements, and other proof of income. So when you get started on any kind of a custody matter, that's always an issue, so have it ready. And um, another thing, if, you are, if your attorney served with, with written discovery, make sure you get, when they give it to you, make sure you get answers back as quick as you possibly can. This is another thing that can delay a case is if you get bogged down in discovery. Also, another thing that you should try your best to avoid is complicating matters by allowing yourself to get drugged down into the mud with the other side. And what I mean by that is, if the other side is acting like an ass, it doesn't mean you have to act like an ass. And I've talked about this in previous videos, but being the adult in the room is very important. Because if you're not, what it ends up happening is you get a bunch of, of side motions getting filed and those have to get handled. Anything from like emergencies to POs to um, contempt. And um, all of those things are a problem. And speaking of contempt, another thing you should be doing which will save you time, money, and effort um, is if, if you're ordered to pay child support, make sure you pay child support and make sure you don't owe money because otherwise what's going to happen is you're going to wind up bogged down in contempt proceedings. Now, if you're not ordered to pay child support, you should still pay something towards the support of your child anyway. And um, the reason is, is that that helps your case and it avo helps avoid the issue of arrearages. Helps you look like you, you're not there about money, you're there about I wanna be in my child's life and it avoids you being ordered to pay a large arrearage later if you are ordered to pay child support. So for both of those reasons, um, it, it's beneficial, go ahead and pay. It may not feel good, but do it. Um, lastly, I think that something else to, to keep in mind that can help move cases along is being realistic in expectations. And that is specific to your case. So I'm not gonna get into what's realistic versus unrealistic, but just as a hypothetical, if you haven't, you know, if you're talking about older kids and they are saying they really don't wanna live in your household, then you're going to be fighting an uphill battle in, in many cases if you try to go for full custody, unless there are other facts in play that make that a more realistic option. So to some extent, being realistic in your expectations is also important. And um, lastly, but no, nevertheless, this is important too, understand what family court is for and what it is not for. Family court is there for dealing with, in the case of child custody, figuring out what's in the best interest of the child and how can we keep both parents in the picture. It's not there to punish one parent or the other, and it's certainly not there to excise a parent out of the children's lives. And if you've ever been to the um, Planned Parenting Conference, um, Judge Keel gives an excellent speech about that, and it's definitely worth listening to. Family courts are not there to terminate rights. So if you think that that's what you're going to do, or if your other, the other side thinks that's what's gonna happen, they're gonna be sorely mistaken. Um, I, I uh, would advise that the more you can be organized and ready to go with your documents early on, that's a major thing that leads to disruption and delay, and also being organized and ready to go with your with your written discovery responses. I know it's an, it feels nosy, it's an, it feels intrusive, I get it, but those are, the, those are two big things I can tell you right out of the chute, always leads to delays when people don't do them in a timely fashion, and it can increase your costs, and it's not worth it. 
Now, guys, if you are, are dealing with a custody case or if you're looking down the barrel of having to deal with a custody case, then you need a good lawyer. And one place you can find a good lawyer is at dads.law, where fathers are not disposable. Thanks, guys.